Och så sitter den läkare bredvid mig. And then there is a doctor next to my head that says, and I will put you to sleep for a while. Then my mind slips away for a second. It was four o'clock in the morning. I thought that I would wake up around 10 o'clock tomorrow morning or something like that. But I didn't, because I woke up one and a half months later. My name is Christina, and in February I got a really bad throat infection that led to sepsis, blood poisoning. If you want to listen, I will now tell you my story. So, I had tonsillitis and went to my doctor to check it up. I had so much pain in my throat. I wasn't really thinking about it that much. And if I get antibiotics, I will be better. Tar vill du ha lite vatten? Man kan ta lite till det här. So I started to feel better and were back at work the next week. I worked for a whole week. Så du kan komma och ta det sen när du vill ha. Then, on Monday morning, I woke up with the chills. I was really cold. And in the middle of the night, I started to throw up. Something I hadn't done in many, many years. And I felt, how could I explain it? Like my hands and feet got numb in a very funny way. It was like ants crawling under my skin. So I thought I should take a bath, a warm bath. So I climbed down the bathtub and was thinking it could help my frozen body. So I laid down and it was hurting just turning around and it was really uncomfortable. Suddenly my breath started to feel heavy. So I woke up my boyfriend Dan and told him that he needed to call an ambulance. The ambulance showed up pretty quick, but I think that he thought that I was nervous or stressed out. It didn't take long until we were at the emergency. It's in Malmö and we live pretty close. At the ER, there stood a whole team waiting for me. Nu kommer rätt, David. Så. Ja, det gör du rätt. Så. Så, ja. Vi fick rätt på det. Och sen så tar det inte lång tid för att vi är på akuten. They are telling me exactly what they are doing. We will put in a needle in your throat and one in your groin and I will take this blood pressure and I will do this and that. And then this suddenly stops and the doctor says, I'm so sorry, but you got blood poisoning and I have to put you to sleep in a respirator. And then there's a doctor next to my head that says, and I will put you to sleep for a while. Then my mind slips away for a second. It was four o'clock in the morning and I thought, but I don't have my keys with me or my phone and I have no money for a cab. How will I get home? Maybe I can borrow a phone here. I thought that I would wake up around 10 o'clock tomorrow morning or something like that, but I didn't. I woke up one and a half month later in Linköping. So, it took a while until I woke up again. So they put me in a respirator that night. And then all the organs were poisoned. They needed dialysis because the kidneys didn't work. My lungs had stopped working. The liver was in bad shape. Everything like that. The bacteria was in my blood and was circulating around my body. I turned black or my skin turned totally black. Hand and feet and my face were all black. Så att det här cirkulerade runt runt i hela kroppen. Och jag svartnade, huden svartnade totalt. Så att eh, händer och fötter och ansikte var ju kolsvart nästan. Kristina Fettersson. Hej Kristina, du är det Tina? Hur är det läget? Jo men det var ju var länge sedan. Hur har du det? They realized in a few days that they couldn't handle my case in Malmö, so they contacted the burn unit in Linköping. They flew me to Linköping and I was put under intensive care. On Monday they started to do my first surgeries to check how damaged my body was. It was pretty bad. They had to amputate both arms under the elbow and my legs over the knee. They tried to save my knees at first, but there were no bloodstream through. 
it was all dead. If they didn't remove it, all my results would be worse. They just infected the rest of the body. The parts were dead, so I couldn't keep them. So they amputated and many more surgeries were done. Skin transplantation for my back. The back didn't heal very fast. But then I started to wake up, slowly. I woke up with a respirator, so I couldn't talk. But I was so dizzy of all the medication, they gave me a lot of painkillers. I didn't really understand what happened. It became natural to stay in the hospital because of the time it took to wake me up. But slowly I understood that I was amputated. They tried to tell me, but I don't think I was really listening to them. Then a psychiatrist came and visited me and told me as it was. She even had a mirror to show me what I looked like. Men jag lyssnade nog inte riktigt. Så sen kom det in en kurator och satt ner och berättade som det var. Så här är det. Jag hade en spegel och som kunde visa också att så här ser det ut. I have a fake nose, but it's very itchy. So I only use it at work when I want to look nice. Ja, jag har den på idag, ja. Ja. Testar vi. Det är nog väst, ja. Det ser svårt att komma åt. Så. Nu bara sätta byt. Trycker vi där lite? Ja. Känns okej? Okay? Ja, tycker jag. Kommer brillorna igen? Mm. Sådär. Så. Ja, nu sitter den ju. Ja. Nu så. But everything will be all right. I'm alive. I think you decide pretty early on in what way you will take it. I think everything would be much harder if someone sat next to you and told you what a terrible thing that had happened. How will you survive this? What will happen next? That would be very bad. Because then I think that you will get that view of the situation too. So, will you take it away? Tycker du? Så. Så. Du vetar till mig lite. Så. Nej, får inte jag det. För jag får vad du får. Jag har provat det också. Det kan låta lite lite silly, men att bli lite depressad och sad har hjälpt mig. Especially when I stay in the hospital. Mostly because I started to question my role as a parent. Not to be able to be home with your son. Not to be able to be with him in his daily life. Not to be able to go with him to his preschool. Not to be able to be with him in the summer. To go to the beach. That felt very sad. Showing swing, huh? Oh, I got it. Och det var precis det du... Vad vill du vara med att leka? David, ska du visa mamma hur du, vad du ska göra i rutschkanan? Springer du ner? Jag så finni ska vi hem. Okej. Okay. Åh, åh. Åh, det var det snabbaste. And when it felt hard, that were things I was crying about. I was very sad to feel like that. When you got depressed, you got sad about everything, the smallest things. Then you feel sorry for yourself. Every little thing becomes hard and terrible. But I can tell you that to be that depressed was so much worse than to be physically disabled. I compare those two things. Then life is not that hard. I think it's worse when your mental health gets affected rather than your physical health. Det var när psyket drabbas av fysik. To meet adults and children are two di totally different things. Children look at you, they're spontaneous and really honest. 
they can say, oh, you have no arms. And I answer, no, I don't. They're not afraid to take a look and say, wow. But adults, they just look a little, and then they turn their head away. Then they look a little more, and then turns away again. But then I start to follow them with my eyes, so they can see that I'm watching them. Then they feel really uncomfortable. So I used to say hi to them. They say hi back, and it looks really, really uncomfortable, and walks away. But some adults are really good, too. They ask me about what happened, but most of them don't. They don't do that. They're typical Swedish people. People are looking at you with sadness in their eyes, like they feel sorry for me. But I don't feel sorry for me, and no one else should either. The most important things are still here. I have my family, my friends, and my brain. I rather have my brain function than be physical healthy with a brain damage. My goals for the future is to be more independent. I need a lot of assistance right now, and I'm great for that. But still, to be more independent would be great. My goals for the future is to be more independent. I need a lot of assistance right now, and I'm grateful for that. But still, to be more independent would be great. I would like to be able to manage more by myself with my prosthesis. I would like to be more effective at work, be able to travel more, do regular things like other people do. Eat at a restaurant, go out for a beer. It doesn't have to be anything more spectacular than that.